Mosley, Mosley's warehouse key. Oh. I wonder why they just hang out with that. Maybe they're just scavenging through the stuff and they found it lying around. Rudshore Gate. That's our destination. There's a big open. There's a big air, but there's quite a very dangerous area we got across. A lot of guards, several tall boys. Right. And you can see the wall of the lo wall of light, glittering way in the distance. Same problem a hundred times this over. This is exactly why those jackasses who run the plague wagon need to gut the bodies before they throw them in here. <laughs> well, when we get the lights back on, it'll be easier. We've got more tanks of whale oil on the way. Finally, the last thing I need to do is crawl around looking for them. Right. I'm headed back to civilization for what's left of it. Have fun in here. Oh, you bet. Because the tall boys are such great conversationalists. You're not going to let that guy get away, right? I don't let anyone get away. Ever. <laughs> Corvo Atano always gets his man. And every man is his man. <laughs> and that one woman that one time. Oh, yeah. Because I was <laughs> ran out of sleeping darts, and I, I was just in too much of a hurry to go around. So another interesting note, the uh, wanted posters for Dowd mm -hmm. all have the generic assassin on him, on them. They what? All the the wanted posters for Dowd yeah. all have just the generic assassin on them. Really? It's not a picture of him specifically? No. No one knows Even when you play the DLC. Interesting. So nobody knows his face, I guess. Maybe, but everybody recognizes him as Dowd immediately. This is quite the desolate area. And that's the end of him. Nice. Now there's a whole row of like but wrecked buildings that you can kind of sneak around so that you, you don't have to run across that big open area with the tall boys. There's a stealthier way. These buildings also, um, they provide higher vantage points from which you can potentially do, uh, take, you know, takedowns of the tall boys. Right. You know, the, the drop attack. Folks, if I could give you one word of advice about the tall boys, don't try to shoot at them. It it, <laughs> it 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 very rarely goes well. You end up using a lot a shitload of ammo. You'll probably take damage. It's it's very difficult to hit those tanks. Yeah, if there was an enemy I saw that like actively promoted not engaging them, it would be the tall boys. It either basically either either do the drop if you can do a drop kill and you're you know fine otherwise you know just go around just go sneak around him 
It's kind of funny, um... D don't make the mistake I'm making right now, in other words. <laughs> or if you absolutely must, you can you can try to do this to, like, aim better. But even... Got lucky there. You can also, I don't recommend doing this because it uses up way too much mana, but when they fire those arrows at you, if you time the wind blast right, you can throw it back. And I believe three hits with their own arrows will kill them. Nice. But like I said, it takes up so much mana wind blasting three times, and with the precise timing, it's really not worth it. Right. Um. But I, I recommend trying it once just, you know, just for fun, just to, to, to have tried it. It's fun, but... It's funny, if you... Like, the, a lot of people make comparisons to this game in uh, Bioshock for obvious reasons. You know, the similar way it's designed. Okay. But, like, they had... The, the different enemies, the big daddies, I guess, would be the equivalent of the tall boys. Mm -hmm. And, like, they're totally on opposite spectrums, because both are supposed to be big and intimidating. Right. But the tall boy, like very like the the difficult nature of it to fight uh really encourages you to sneak around it whereas the big daddy is like not only do you have to fight them but they're often like pumped up as this big challenge that you get to pick on okay that are fun to fight you know what i mean okay well actually a lot of the uh the art direction visual design art direction for this game was actually done by uh men named uh, victor antonov who uh, did uh, Half-Life 2. Oh. Well, then I, I like, I, I can see the um, visual comparisons to the Strider concept. Yeah, that, yeah, there was, a lot of people commented on that. It actually was the same guy. Yeah, it's so like, yeah, the, the, co the Combine soldiers and machines and the city. Yeah. It actually makes me think of, um, some cut con cut uh, concepts and stuff. Have you read all the cut concepts from Half Life Two? No. There's some really good stuff there. You should like read it when you get a chance. Um, but it makes me think of this enemy. I think it was called Mr. Happy. You know about that? No, I don't think so. I can't remember if it was Gabe Newell's idea or if Gabe was just commenting on it. But it was an it was a monster that was supposed to like knock you down mm -hmm. and like implied sexually assault Gordon Freeman. Oh. And like there was tons of notes on it, like should you knock his glasses off, which would blur the screen, making it difficult for the player to na like. And like Gabe was talking about it at length, and I was like, why? This is weird. I I really don't think anyone played the Half-Life games and said, you know, this is good and all, but the fact that the protagonist is never raped is a serious demerit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I cannot I cannot imagine anyone asking for that. I can't imagine anybody playing any game and thinking, you know what this needs? Rape. That would make this game better. Well, to be fair, Nick, there are whole subgenres in some countries that, well... Yeah, well. So I, you say you say some countries like that's more than one. Okay. Well, I I don't want to offend yet another essential demographics by singling anyone out. Nick. I'll take I'll talk endless love of that country's games, but they're the only ones with the uh, artistic freedom that would allow that sort of thing. We are, of course, speaking of Costa Rica. Yeah. Notorious hotbed of both video game development and shocking perversion. Like, does she not see you, like, popping around in she and seems out so, of reality? She seems like, very... Something's up with that guy. She seems very blasé about pretty much everything at this point. She's just relaxed. She's just having a smoke. You know? It's not like that'll keep her from living her life at this point. Actually, she's actually smoking medical marijuana for the plague. Well, good. It'll inhibit the cancer cell growth. I she guess. has cancer too now? Poor woman. Huh? Jesus. What's that? <laughs> she has cancer too now? Poor woman. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that poor woman. Anything's, anything's possible. All right, this is some of that aimless wandering footage that's probably not going to make it to the final cut here. You know, Corvo's hands look really good for somebody who lives and does what he does. Yeah. He's very he's very vain. He has manicures like daily. <laughs> yeah. Even when he's like on the lamb, you know, living in the in the in the Hound's Pit pub with the other loyalist conspirators. That was one of cleaning his, and manicuring. That was one nails. of his that was one of his demands. I need a bottle of fine clear coat. <laughs> God, I spent a long time not knowing what the hell I was supposed to do. <laughs> and this is the cut version. This is the version with a lot of where I managed to chop a lot of the bullshit out, but clearly not enough. So does she not say anything anymore? No, nah, she's she she's got nothing more to say to you. She's yeah, really nursing that cigarette. I mean, oh. not like I want her to smoke a lot, but Okay, now okay, now I remember. Okay, now we're kind of sort of making progress. Or maybe not. Just go for a swim. There's a bone charm up there. Rune. Or a rune. Is it a rune? Mm -hmm. If it was merely a bone charm, I probably would have given up before I found it. Ah. No, don't go over here! Pretty sure it's not this way. <laughs> no! <laughs> Past self, if you can hear me, just don't. <laughs> you, have, you have the opposite problem I normally do. <laughs> What's that? It's like where my past self signs my future self up for shit that I don't want to do. <laughs> but your past self is doing stuff that your future self is just looking back and like, why? I guess if you look at the problems one way or another, they're pretty much the same. What, what are you doing? What is? What? What? What am I doing here? What? What was I thinking? Did you have a friend over and let them play? No. <laughs> no. I don't. Maybe. Maybe I passed the pad over to my cat for a while or something. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I, oh no! Oh, oh no! 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 no. No! Ah. Okay, that's staying in. That part's staying <laughs> in. Up in time. No, not this way! It's not this way! This is the problem with, with doing these videos so long after I originally recorded them, I can no longer remember what my thought processes, if any, were when it was actually made. Hey, when is that next podcast going up? Oh, I, I'm, I'm not sure yet. I need, to, I need to do the editing, finish the editing on it. Okay, all right, here we go, I think. Is this, is this actual progress? Am I getting closer? Maybe. this. Oh, Mosley's warehouse key. Letter to Ferg. Hey, Ferg. It's Ernest. No. A word of advice on your greedy little treasure hunting trips to the flooded district. If you find yourself stranded, the only way out is through Rudshore Gate. This rewire tool will come in handy. If you get through the doors, the circuitry panel for the Wall of Light is just on the other side. Better yet, let me come with you. I'll handle the complicated things. Craggy. With two Gs. Well, well, no, Craggy always has two Gs, never mind. Yeah, I was going to say, does it not always have it two It does, Gs? yes. My past self-stupidity is is, is infecting me in the present now. 
<laughs> you just can't put up with the bullshit anymore. There's quite a bit of stuff in there. What, what, what am I doing in here? I'm admiring the view. What view? They're boxes! <laughs> There's boxes and windows with bars on them! There's nothing to view! <laughs> it's so fun to be in this seat today when yesterday I was losing to the rock five times in a row. <laughs> See, my, my, my past self screwing me over again! <laughs> that, that was his like the fault. Worst, the worst part is you're also in the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like you see what's going wrong, but you can't stop it. I, I, I'm powerless. <sighs> it's it, 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 it's like it's like some Greek, it's like watching some Greek tragedy where you know something that the protagonist doesn't, but there's nothing you can do to prevent the catastrophe that he's walking into. <laughs> 